you all to a very special presentation today with Dr. Brad Sims, the president of Capital Technology University, who will be speaking about the online Bachelor of Science in Construction Management and Critical Infrastructure here at Capital Tech, and a whole lot more. As I mentioned in an email to several of you earlier, um, this session will not just talk about our new degree, but uh, some very important aspects of the field of construction management that will also be covered. Now, let's get right into it. Here's today's agenda. We're gonna start with a few session pointers, just a few, then a little bit of a bio about the presenter, uh, the presentation itself, a Q&A. And you'll notice there's actually two Q&A uh, types. There's a chat session for general comments. There's a Q&A section, a question and answer session for specific questions. We'll come back and talk about that in a little bit. Toward the end of the presentation, it says upcoming webinar. We'll talk about how to uh, go ahead and get a hold of uh, the recording, slides, and certificate. Now, here are a few session pointers. We'll be answering questions really all throughout the presentation. So uh, you can type them in. Uh, if they're just a general comment, feel free to use the chat or you can use the question and answer. The question and answer is set so that everybody can see it. Uh, but if you have a specific question that needs to be answered on a more private basis, I can do that as well. We're not at this time activating microphones or webcams for the participants. That may change if we have a small group, but right now we will not. A link to the recording and to the slides will be sent to everybody, uh, whether you attend the session live or view it on demand. And, uh, or, but if you've registered, you will get a recording link. Uh, we also make available a participation certificate. We'll talk about that more at the end. And we always encourage you to let us know how we did. Let me talk just briefly today about our presenter. Our presentation today is called Online Bachelor of Science Program in Construction Management and Critical Infrastructure at Capital Tech. It's presented by Dr. Brad Sims. Dr. Sims is president of Capital Technology University. He's an educator, administrator, and construction project manager with extensive experience both in academia and in industry. His academic experience includes being interim chancellor and chief academic officer at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University's worldwide campus, dean and professor of the College of, of Technology at Indiana State University, and professor and department head at Western Carolina University. Before transitioning to academia, Dr. Sims built a very successful career in the industrial construction industry. He holds a earned PhD in in, in curriculum and instruction from Purdue University, a Master of Science in Construction from the University of Florida, and a Bachelor of Science in, con in Building Construction Management, which is also from Purdue. I'm very pleased to welcome Dr. Sims to our presentation. And with that, I give him control of the session. All right, thanks, Bill. So welcome everybody. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit today about our new program, construction management and critical infrastructure. And uh, here at Capital Tech, we've added critical infrastructure to many of our program areas to meet the current industry demands. So let me just go to the next slide. So just real quick, kind of why the interest in uh, critical infrastructure and then combined with uh, construction management here at Capital Tech. So for my background, um, I started off uh, in the construction industry and I was also a little bit into the IT portion of it. Uh, my first job was at the Savannah River site doing waste and environmental projects. And I happened to be the IT kind of person for our whole department. We were the largest land user back in the day. And then as I moved around the country, I was involved in building refineries and I was kind of the default IT person on the job sites as I worked that part of my career. And then I went into higher education uh, and uh, built a career uh, going from a uh, uh, program director and building a, my first program at, at, that was completely from the ground up at Western Carolina in the bachelor's degree in construction management, which is almost 20 years old, still doing well in 
I think it was the first online master's degree in construction management in uh, 2005 at Western Carolina, which is still going strong. So uh, I, I really enjoyed both aspects of working with the industry and knowing the industry needs and also providing the opportunities for students to go out and be successful in the construction industry career. As I came here to Capital Tech, Capital Tech is one of the oldest certified centers of academic excellence cyber defense programs in the nation uh, that's credited by NSA and DHS, which has been accredited several times. We're a national award-winning cybersecurity degree granting program institution. And, uh, you know, cybersecurity is important in um, critical infrastructure as well. So how do you blend the next generation of what the construction industry needs and what does the critical infrastructure uh, segment need? Uh, next slide, Bill. So Capital Tech is perfect for that. Capital Tech was founded in 1927 by a Navy vet down in DC. Uh, several years later, it moved its way up to where we are, Laurel, Maryland, which is about 15 miles north of DC, right off the parkway. We have 52 acre campus right between NSA and NASA. Many of our students go to work for either NSA or NASA as well. Uh, we have degrees at the bachelor's, master's, and doctoral level. All of our master's and doctoral programs are completely online. And our undergraduates are a large chunk on campus, but some of the degree programs like this one, we're offering as a online modality as well. Next slide. So the industry itself, when you look at the construction industry, historically the construction industry as a whole is the largest employer in the United States if you take away the government and military. And as this chart that was put together by ABC, Associated Builder and Contractors about the growth and demand, and I know that the virus has slowed everything down, but uh, if we recover quickly, I think we'll be back on track. As you can see the forecast for both construction spending and, and construction employment continues to grow. Uh, the, uh, the, the dotted lines indicate with the infrastructure projects added on top of the traditional building demand across the United States. So the industry itself, when you include everything associated with the construction industry is huge. And there is always demand for uh, both tradespeople and management people in the industry and the industry is advancing in technology, uh, you know, especially with the shortage of the labor force that is on and off. You know, technology has to pick up some of that hole and do, and do things where traditionally you have a person doing it. So the push for technology is, is more today than it was in the past. And uh, construction, you just can't fill all the jobs. But as we push technology, the, the need to understand IT and technology has grown dramatically. The smart buildings have grown dramatically and cybersecurity attacks have started occurring in the industry. Next slide, please, Bill. So the construction industry as a whole, if you go through a general construction management uh, bachelor's degree program, uh, it is project management oriented. Uh, some Universities have a flavor, either commercial or residential, or maybe heavy highway. But generally, when you go through it and you graduate, and if you're a new graduate, you go out and you go into a segment of the industry. And that can be across the board anything from what we have pictures here of refineries, the wastewater treatment facilities, hospitals, transportation, the whole gamut. And so as a new graduate, you take those skill sets that you learned in construction project management and you apply them to the industry segment that you go into. And there's, there's a slight difference the way each one of them are kind of built and what you need to know. But uh, generally your, your project management background allows you to go into uh, all sorts of entry level positions for the construction industry. Next slide, please. And so it, it's an industry that certainly lends itself to folks who want to either work indoors or they want to work outdoors or they want to do both. Uh, it, you know, there's, there's lots of travel for some of the companies and some companies are, are very local, some are international. 
uh, lots of lots of different career paths from estimator schedule, project management, field engineer, a superintendent. So there's many areas you can choose to go in that fit what you see yourself in a career in the industry. Next slide, please. And the industry itself has many, many software tools that you can use to help you. So if you're in estimating, there's takeoff and estimating software. There's bid management software. There's project scheduling software. There's project management software. There's accounting job costing software. And then the, one of the, the things that's, that's really exciting that came over the last few years was the building information modeling software. And these software tools, many of them that I started my career using in DOS, of course, are no longer like that. They're very advanced tools. Uh, in some cases where traditionally you can imagine rolling out a set of blueprints is no longer done. It's done on a computer with one of these tools that gives you great control over the project. And then the building information modeling, it, you can actually walk through the project and see uh, what's interfering with, with certain parts or how's it going together. So these tool sets have come uh, leap years ahead of, of the 90s whenever I started my career but they are software tools and they have a whole IT infrastructure that needs to support it. Usually uh, a company may house these tools out of their main office and then the, the job site locations are accessing their tools that they need on the job site via the internet to their location. Uh, but there's a whole huge division of IT that supports field offices and main offices uh, with these software tools that are, are really state-of-the-art tools right now. Next slide, please. So with this degree, what I've uh, kind of set up here is we want to maintain the core project management skill set so that anybody who would go through the BS in construction management critical infrastructure will be able to go out and work in project management. That hasn't changed. What we've really done as a first in the nation degree is we've taken cybersecurity classes, uh, we've built new critical infrastructure classes, and we combine this into this one degree so that uh, folks understand a little bit about all these aspects. And you may go into a IT position supporting the construction field operations, but you know all about it because you had that background. Or you may uh, be in cybersecurity protecting a company, but you know about what's going on in the construction project management. Or you may be a project manager who's really good with all the software and IT aspects. So this is, this is unique in the fashion that we are blending all these areas together. Next slide, please. And just kind of the highlight Right now, the project management courses, as you can see on this list, these are traditional courses that I would say that anybody going in the industry will greatly benefit if they don't have a strong understanding of what it takes to be a good project manager. Um, ideas or classes like methods and materials to estimating is key, legal issues, uh, understanding project management and, and planning and scheduling, what systems look like, how do you understand quantities, how does things go into place, how do you understand working with all the vendors. So this is the core set of classes that we maintain to give you project management skill set that you can take with you into the industry. Next slide, please. Now starting with the critical infrastructure, how do we blend in some of the importance of the DHS 16 sectors of critical infrastructure. So in critical infrastructure, this is Department of Homeland Security, 16 sectors. Uh, and, and there's a wide variety of, of obviously areas that you need to cover in critical infrastructure, but the areas that we wanna talk about with this degree uh, go across many of the segments. So whether we're talking about wastewater treatment facility, energy sector such as a power plant or refinery, manufacturing center, any of those things that are, are more industrial based, that's where we at Capital Tech want to talk about critical infrastructure and how to apply it 
from our point of view in that aspect. The, uh, the critical infrastructures, 16 sectors, of course, any of these that go down can cause tremendous problems into the United States. But as you can imagine, you know, if you had a multi-failure where you, you had no power, you had no wastewater treatment facility, your manufacturing stopped producing goods for you to consume, all that happening at one time would really shut down, um, you know, the whole United States. So, so some of these elements that, that we think match up with construction is what we've identified in our critical infrastructure area to be concerned about. Next slide. So of the 16 sectors, we're gonna talk a little bit about operational technology which would, would be found in these type of facilities. So refineries, power plants, wastewater treatment facilities, dams, electrical systems, chemical processing. The, the equipment that operates these facilities is really controlled by a technology called operational technology. So we consider that part of the critical infrastructure protection of these facilities to keep them going. And operation technology that's its purpose, to keep a facility working, regardless of what's going on. Next slide, please. So understanding a little bit about operational technology and the difference with IT information technology is that IT focuses on information and OT focuses on processes operation. So IT system will protect data first and shut down, but OT will prioritize operation and, and ensuring that it still runs regardless of the data. So those are the this two slight differences of, of the way to think about it. So OT operates the control, industrial control systems on a piece of equipment to make it run. IT is the connector to all that. And, you know, probably the common term that you hear in, is the uh, I IoT industrial internet or things that would kind of connect all that on the, on the facility. Next slide, please. So operational technology, to define it, it refers to the computing systems that are used to manage industrial operations as opposed to administrative operations. Operation systems include production line management, mining operations control, oil and gas monitoring, et cetera. So if you look at this little chart here, OT is on top of everything that runs these type of industrial facilities, which include components of OT, as you can see in the green, is industrial control systems. You can see the SCADA, supervisory control and data acquisition systems, distributed control systems, DCS, or the programmable, programmable logic controllers, PLCs, that are in these facilities as well. Next slide, please. So this OT tells, operation technology tells the equipment in the facility, the industrial control systems, what to do. So in this particular case, a common piece of equipment in all these industrial facilities is a valve. So a valve turns something on and off. Uh, that liquid could be explosive, non-explosive, all sorts of things could run through that valve. And so therefore you can see <clears throat> if the control of this valve, the operation technology tells a valve to go on and off at the wrong time, it could do major damage to the facility and could do worse, it could blow up a facility. So a foreign attack, if they get into an industrial facility and they control the OT on equipment, they can wreak havoc. And so this is the danger within the critical infrastructure that we see of these industrial facilities. Next page, please. So a little bit of the history of OT and industrial facilities. Uh, so facilities operated many years before operational technology had little need to worry about any cybersecurity or attacks. Equipment was first operated just strictly manually and then the ICS, industrial control systems, became operated for many, many years by pneumatics. And pneumatics uh, use gas or pressurized, pressurized air to turn something on or off. 
And so it really wasn't, it wasn't connected to um, the internet. There was no real worry about anybody getting in from outside from, you know, 5,000 miles away attacking something. So, so it's, it's only now that we're connected to the internet and OT is a dangerous aspect in our critical infrastructure that we must protect because we don't want the power grid going down. We don't want to lose um, any of our manufacturing capabilities or anything like that in industrial facilities. Next slide, please. So here, just kind of a summary characteristics before OT was it was not networked or connected, controls were often mechanical, and everything was designed for longevity and reliability. Remember, the whole goal of industrial processes is to keep it producing. And if you look at this picture over here, you can see this looks like a, an old control room, maybe of a, a nuclear control room, something like that. In the old days where there was no electronic, you know, um, kind of, instrumentation, it was all really manually driven with dials and everything. That's the way that, that it worked for years and years. Next slide, please. So as control systems have advanced with technology uh, and, and they maintain their purpose of an industrial control system, which is to maintain efficiency, automation, control, uptime and safety, what you want to maintain. If you look over there to the picture, you can see a modern day control room all electronics. So now that we're connecting information technology IT with the operational technology to tell uh, that piece of equipment to turn it on and off and what to do, now we're dependent. We have data sharing. We have open connected type of sources. And as this grows, because everything's becoming more and more connected, such as your appliances or vendors that are connected, the internet, bring your own device, cloud, everything will increase our vulnerability across these type of industrial facilities being attacked from anybody across the globe. Next slide, please. So with some of those attacks, as you can see, here's a list of potential dangers, just the short list of what can happen from an, a foreign attack. You know, you can blow up a plant. You, health and safety issues can be damaged. You can shut down facilities production. You can steal the data. Equipment can be damaged. It can cause financial damage to the organization. Environmental damage could occur from this. Uh, the company could have a reputation damage and it can impact what we need in the population. Next slide, please. This is just one previous attack that's, that's really kind of recent, uh, Triton which was attacked the Saudi Arabian petrochemical plant in 2017. Several of these attacks now are documented uh, uh, that have occurred on industrial control systems and industrial facilities. And it's growing uh, in number every year, as you can imagine. And so we need to help figure out ways to protect our critical infrastructure and our industrial facilities is where we see this type of degree talking about that and giving uh, information of what's important for somebody to understand that. So in the world of construction or the world of cybersecurity, if you were to take a degree just in construction management, you really don't get involved with cybersecurity courses or much in IT courses. You do the software. If you're a cybersecurity student, the odds of you ever seeing a, <laughs> a valve, maybe a 36 inch valve are, are rare or walking in a, a, a refinery and seeing how a facility operates. That's not, that's not a normal part of the curriculum. So in our curriculum, we like to think that we can share these two elements together so that a, a student has a better grasp on the needs from both what the facility needs to protect itself and how you construct that facility and how it all works together and, and is really quite uh, a different look than the basic construction management um, program. Uh, next slide, please. So in the uh, curriculum, we also include an unmanned systems course. Uh, 
And as you can imagine, unmanned systems, the drones especially, have become a large chunk in many of the construction companies as well. And also, uh, there's lots of dangers. You can, in the uh, critical infrastructure, you can use drones to both uh, bring in cyber attacks on an industrial facility. You can use drones to physically attack critical infrastructure. But in the construction industry, you can use drones to do inspections with with uh, no human being being there. And so um, drones are, and unmanned systems, are a big part of what the what's being added to the construction industry. So we do include the class in this curriculum on unmanned systems. Uh, what you see here is a list of potential career paths a student might take from a program like this. So um, the traditional construction management paths are something like superintendents, project managers, estimators, may go down this line of safety and risk management. If you have more of the uh, desire to go into IT cybersecurity, you could go into just working in the uh, BIM management, building information modeling, uh, network administration, IT director, MIS director, the cybersecurity manager, which is, again, it, it's only growing, the cybersecurity tax even on the construction industry. Or you might want to go into using unmanned systems. Some of the construction companies have divisions just for unmanned systems and, uh, and be part of that uh, type of career. Next slide, please. So here's a recent salary uh, from PAWS. They do salary, uh, kind of uh, salary backgrounds each year. You can go to their website. Look at look across the industry. Uh, these are for executives. They do a salary uh, calculations for all sorts of different positions at different construction companies. But as you can see, the need uh, from IT MIS director up to operations and estimating, they all pay pretty well. The career these are just base salaries. Construction and industry is very good about having bonuses on top of that, and the construction industry has a higher than average raises each year compared to all other industries. So it's a, it's a very good paying industry. Um, and again, you can usually um, find where you want to be in a career and experience different uh, indoor locations or be outside or a mix of it. So it's, it's not just sitting in front of a computer uh, type of industry unless you go into specific um, section of IT or cybersecurity where you may be at the corporate headquarters being indoors all the time. So it's, it's a great industry in the regards of both pay, bonuses, and raises, and what you can do with it. Uh, next slide, please. So on this uh, page here, I have a couple links. The uh, first link here, it's about five minutes long. We won't play it here, but it is a um, a great video for somebody who is just starting a career in the construction industry and it's that YouTube. It's about five minutes where it talks and shows uh, new graduates on construction job site and what they're experiencing. Highly recommend for anybody who's going into the industry that you share that with them. Uh, you can find it directly off of the website constructioneducation.com and you can find more links to the uh, higher education, construction education programs right off of constructioneducation.com. Uh, here at Capital Tech, because we have expanded into the critical infrastructure area, we've also uh, have a new group that we are sponsoring. It's called the um, Women in Cybersecurity. It's the critical infrastructure community. It is growing quickly. It's free for anybody uh, to join. You can find that at uh, womanci.org. Uh, it's off our website. Again, we're, we're leading the critical infrastructure segment of the Women in Cybersecurity uh, group. So we would love to have you join that. Uh, and as we grow out our critical infrastructure courses, we have, uh, we have a mix of industry people. Um, Ron Martin, who's our adjunct, is, is leading the critical infrastructure courses. We have industry people like Gary Burke, who's at Capital Tech teaching the construction courses, and other construction people who are experienced industry people 
teaching the construction courses. We have cybersecurity people teaching the cybersecurity courses. So we access industry people who have real world experience to teach our courses here at Capital Tech. Uh, that's one of the strengths, I think, of Capital Tech. It's always been a strength. Uh, the, the online environment can include a mix of, of, of us using Canvas and Zoom product within the courses. Uh, so it's, it's very hands-on type of courses we offer, even though we offer our courses like this online. And so we, um, we invite you to check us out more and see what's going on with any of our programs. Next slide, please. And so that's the end of uh, my summary of this program and kind of how we have come together to blend critical infrastructure under cyber and a real world construction project management. And um, I'll leave it up to Bill to uh, see if there's any questions that we can answer for you. All right, thank you very much. Right now there are uh... Uh, two questions that have come up, or maybe, yes, there are, and they're from both from Rich, but let me just mention that you have two ways to ask questions. You can uh, go on to the chat session, which Rich has done, or you can use the question and answer, and we'll get to either one. Whether you use one or the other, we'll get your questions answered. Let's start with Rich's question. Is OT analogous to FRCS, Facility Related Control Systems, or specifically reserved to industrial processes? Um, I think it's related to industrial control systems, really, the OT operational technology. Um, is it designed, as I'm reading the rest of it, also mm -hmm. is OT by default designed with safe fail, ability to operate off the grid with perhaps option. I, it's, that's, that's part of the problem is, is really uh, the operational technology as it was built was really designed to drive the industrial control systems, and it wasn't initially thought about about protecting it from cyber attack. So now what we're seeing is there's a lot of good companies out there getting involved in this and figuring out ways to protect the facilities in the OT because it was really just designed to operate that equipment and it wasn't worried about cyber attack. So um, lots of stuff going on in that area that I've, I've been reading about. Are there other questions? Those are great questions, Rich. You know, Brad, I was thinking uh, perhaps I should not mention this, but I will let, uh, reveal my uh, total ignorance on this subject. But um, I think many of us think of uh, in the, some large industrial complex as something that we might see on an episode of The Simpsons where Homer Simpson is sitting in a very old school, old style control room. Uh, and basically is an idiot and um, the uh, and yet the picture you saw th that we just saw that you showed is this very sophisticated high-tech environment uh, requiring a high level of training and education simply to run the equipment and to keep it things operating and that precludes the idea of uh, someone designing the whole process and putting it together in the first place and making it, it would work. What are some of the projects that you think that, um, the kinds of projects do you think that our graduates from this program uh, will probably end up? I mean, you, you mentioned a broad field array of different sectors that they could go into, but uh, do you imagine them more in the physical, working in these large, uh, setting up these large um, manufacturing plants and, uh, um, or, uh, industrial buildings, commercial buildings, what do you see as the future of that for most of our graduates? Well, I think, you know, part of it's determined upon our market area. So we're, we see a large number of our students going to work for one of the government agencies or government subcontractors. So in this regard, I think, you know, there's several large construction firms that certainly uh, are, are looking towards our students to fill project management needs, and they're mostly building facilities, large-scale facilities, where they want that aspect, but we're also uh, close to the Department of Homeland Security, and, and uh, 
over the years, the, the OT wasn't really well addressed by DHS. They're talking about critical infrastructure, but not really this particular aspect. So I think there's a strong connection there for the folks who really like the cyber and to get involved in it. And, and there's a whole market of, of, of refurbishment. So if you saw the picture of the old school, um, like nuclear control room with, mm -hmm. with, it's all dials and stuff. Well, there's, there's a place not far from here that refurbishes those systems because they, they still have to have the same arms and dials that they've been built, but then they're gutted out and everything in the back is now digital. So uh, the, the facilities operators still know, because that's part of it, you have to know exactly what lever to go pull and what dial to turn. And so as they refurbish them, <coughs> they put in all the digital system underneath it, but they use the same dials and um, controls and times because they're so out of date, um, the facility that's refurbished go to eBay and look for these parts and try to get these old parts put back on the system. So, so it, it's, uh, it, it's really uh, an interesting uh, kind of area to be in. I mean, industrial construction itself is, is really a unique area. And, and uh, as you look down that list of projects, um, what I've noticed over the years is, you know, if you go work in industrial construction, you usually spend the rest of your life doing that. If you go build highways, you usually build your highways the rest of your life. If you're using building hospitals, you usually build hospitals. Because they, they have their own little nuance to that. But as more and more students, and I think one day you're going to see that all high school students are going to be having at least one coding class as they come out of high school. Uh, you know, that'll be a norm eventually where uh, many of our students, as they go into the college system, will already be well above where any of us that are older would have been in that tech sector. And so a good blend, you know, we can't, you can't build a physical building without physically working at it. You know, it's not an IT job, but also the structures, whether it's smart, it's a smart home. If you build a complete smart home, think about everything that's integrated within the smart home that controls everything. So, so the integration of construction and technology on that level will only continue to expand. That's a great answer. Thank you so much. There are questions that have been coming in. I'm going to start with a question that um, uh, Lyndon uh, Augustine has asked. Since this program is new, is there any previous coursework, job experience, et cetera, that can be possibly used toward program completion? Yes. So, so that's a, a well. There's two part question uh, in a way. Yes, we have previous coursework. We always accept transfer. So, if um, if you send in all your transcripts with the application that goes through through a review and anything we can give you credit for, either as transfer credit or elective credit, um, we will do that. We we try to be pretty generous with that. The second part which is, is associated with another degree. So <clears throat> this fall, we are going to be putting together and launching an online bachelor's degree in what's called professional trades administration. And, and that degree is just built around a core business set of courses that you have to take, understanding finances and, and entrepreneurship and how to run an organization. And the rest of it's going to be set up where if you come from one of the trades, say your, your apprenticeship will be evaluated and given a big block of elective credit that will just drop in. So depending on the uh, student's background, whether they came with transfer credit, that can be directly correlated to a program like this, but that bachelor's degree in trades administration, it, professional trades administration is set up for anybody who came from the field and has field credit like apprenticeship programs, that all that can be brought in is elective credit. So you're just worried about taking the core business set. And we understand when you look historically about um, uh, companies like home building. So home building, as you can imagine, is what most people across the nation recognize as construction. Uh, and it can be operated by an individual or it can be a big corporation. But what you see is most home builders have failed 
not because they couldn't build a house, but because they didn't understand the financial cash flow situation. So under that degree program, the Bachelors in Professional Trades Administration, we want to get skill sets about financial and business and entrepreneurship to people who may want to start their own company. Maybe they've been a plumber in the field 20 years, but they want to start their own company. We can bring in big blocks of their experience towards that degree and give them just that core set of business. So really those are two different ways of looking at the, uh, either previous course, coursework or job experience. Great. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Dr. James Hall says, uh, critical infrastructure protection is an area primarily managed by the NSA and FBI. Do you see any class, do you see many classes being offered by capital in the near or long-term future? Then he goes on to mention after 9-11, I worked as a liaison to the Coast Guard as it related to the FBI and infrastructure protection. Yeah, so uh, Ron Martin is on this. He is our lead faculty member who is developing the critical infrastructure online courses. And I believe his first critical infrastructure online course starts the second half of summer. And so we, we have a series of three or four critical infrastructure classes that Ron Martin's working on right now. And you, know, you can, uh, anybody can also sign up as a nine degree seeking student and register for one of the critical infrastructure courses. We also mostly with NSA, we have a seed program where we have a certificate program with NSA already for many years in their cyber area. Um, the, uh, the critical infrastructure, uh, women in critical infrastructure community was developed hand in hand with Diane Janicek from NSA and she partners with us closely. So we're really tied in to do anything we can help for, support NSA. Oh, I see Ron Martin just typed in that the first critical infrastructure course, he's launching it on June 29th. All right, and that's at the master's level, correct, Brad? That, that one's the master's level, but the undergraduate ones, Ron, is, is going to be developing those to launch with this program as well. Uh, this would, might be a good opportunity, since we're talking about a graduate uh, degree program, to mention that uh, I don't have a slide about this, but on Sunday, we will offer first a master's degree virtual information session, a virtual open house, followed then uh, later in the afternoon by a doctoral information, uh, virtual information session. And uh, again, I don't have a slide on the on either of those here handy, but if you go to the Capitol website, you can uh, register for those. If you're interested in, uh, we're talking today, of course, about the bachelor's level, but if you're beyond the bachelor's level already and looking toward a degree at the master's or PhD level, um, those information sessions would be helpful to you. Now, we don't have a master's or PhD program exactly like this one. This is a very unique program uh, only at the bachelor's level, but we do offer related degrees to these. Um, and uh, Brad may want to mention a little bit of these, uh, talk about particularly at the master's level, some of the programs that we're offering just while we have a moment here. Yeah, so we have two sort of related masters. We have the master's degree in critical infrastructure, and Ron Martin is, is building, this is the first of those uh, classes, and the rest of the classes are heavy in cybersecurity. And then we also have uh, launched a master's degree in construction cybersecurity, which incorporates cybersecurity with the different IT and software packages in the construction industry. So those are couple of the master's programs completely online and um, if if you come to Sunday's open house you'll see a little bit about all of our master's online programs but they all are also in um, eight-week format so we uh, for anything that's online we deliver it in an eight-week format whether it's completely asynchronous or a combination of asynchronous with zoom built into it they're all designed around uh, that type of schedule, eight weeks. And, and Brad, that brings up a good point. I'd like you to talk just a little bit more about the delivery methodology for this particular degree, that is for the online bachelor's of science in this field. Um, you, you touched on it earlier, but I 
think it'd be helpful for you to to talk a little more about it because uh, online can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people and uh, how do you see these courses being laid out for a student applying to this field so these are are really they'll all be accessible through canvas and so we've designed them to be non-specific time you can take them you know any time during the semester without as long as you're within the schedule so they're they're not synchronous delivery they're asynchronous but within that campus platform there's going to be um, sessions that are like zoom that'll be recorded besides being uh, the access to canvas which has the documentation in there the tests and quizzes any type of um, uh, you know, communications back and forth from the student and, and faculty member. Um, in the software courses, you'll see that the, the, the faculty will be <coughs> taking screenshots of the pages of the software that they're using and post them in Canvas and talk about them. So it's going to be really kind of an interactive asynchronous course through the construction uh, program. Uh, so we we and, and, and we've got to that point with the adjuncts we're using which are all industry people and they've had experience teaching in that modality so we want to keep it as connected to the students in in a visual way and um, not just what you might think you just don't read something and you post something and you take a quiz it's it's much more um, interactive type of asynchronous delivery inside the canvas which you can log from any internet connection. Thank you, that's very helpful. I also wanna mention that, that you mentioned Ron uh, a couple times. Ron has posted, there's a, a blog that, um, on the Capitol website that actually talks about the difference between IT and OT. And he has listed um, in the chat session, the link to that. So I wanted to shout that out so that uh, you could check that out and learn a little bit more from that blog. Um, are there any other questions? This has been a great discussion and we are drawn to a conclusion with our time. So I want to make, but I want to make sure that we catch all of them if there are any. Okay, let me go on. And again, if you post a question, we'll stop everything and take it, but I want to move on to near the conclusion. All of our webinars, we, this is the third one we've offered this spring are available online. Uh, two of them are already on demand. This one will be on demand early next week. Here's the website that you can go uh, to uh, look at each of these. We are currently building the 2021 webinar schedule. We'll roll that out in September and then have monthly sessions through the academic year. Watch our website for more details about that. Now, how to get um, a link to the recording or a certificate of completion is very easy. I will be sending out an email to all those who registered for this session and you can uh, just wait for that email to come. It will provide a link to the recording today, what we're doing right now in the live session. You will also have uh, availability to download the slides. And finally, we'll give you the opportunity to obtain a certificate of completion if you would like to have one. Those are available upon request to both live session attendees, such as you are right now, and those who view it later on demand. All you have to do is respond to the email and uh, tell me what name you want and I'll put that on your certificate. With that, that does conclude the session. I'm looking again to make sure that we have any other questions. No, I don't see any. Um, and uh, be watching for that email. And then next week on our website, this will be available on demand. We will process it and get it up there next week. I'd like to thank our presenter, uh, Dr. Brad Sims for this presentation. And uh, it has been great and helpful to me personally. And uh, I've learned a whole lot more about OT than I ever knew before. So I appreciate that greatly. Okay, thank you all. We are done officially. You can log out at any time. Uh, thank you for attending.